Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm sharing with you my mermaid paper art doll that I made as a part of a swap group where we're swapping um, paper art dolls. And there's all different types of styles coming through and all different interesting stuff. And <laughs> um, this one is mine for the month of May, which is also mermaid, why, which is why the theme was mermaids. And so I started out with an art doll that I had made on the Art Joy of Sharing channel when we did art dolls in 2017, and I never finished her. So the first thing I'm doing is doing the shading and detailing of the body. Um, if nudity bothers you, don't watch this. <laughs> She's naked. <laughs> then once I'm done with that, um, I'm taking off her legs. I'm going to save the legs and in the second video, part two, you'll see another whole outfit with the legs of what she looks like when she's on land, but I couldn't fit it all into one video. So you'll have to go to part two for that. So then I take a piece of deli paper and I'm drawing a mermaid tail. I want this to be fully articulated so that it can move because if it was just straight, she wouldn't be able to move in the water. I also want uh, the front and back of my art doll to look nice. I don't want it to be one-sided. Back in the day when you made a doll, a when you had a paper doll, you just had little tabs and you folded the, the tabs back to hold on the outfit. So the whole back of them were um, just naked or just white even. Um, but when I do my dolls, I make them so that the front and back both look nice. So you can see that I'm separating out pieces of the tail to make an articulated tail. And I'm also going to draw two of the top section, section one, because it's going to, the, the body part of the doll that you can see up there at the top is gonna to slide in between two pieces so that when you look at the back, it's got uh, a complete tail as well. So I'm using 140 pound uh, cold press watercolor paper as the base of my doll. And that's the, the other part of the doll was made in the same way. Basically, I collaged a bunch of papers that are skin colored, sort of brownish, tannish, onto watercolor paper and then cut out my pieces for the um, arms and legs and body and face of the doll. So now I have some gel printed pieces. These are deli paper, or in one case, it's the a paper napkin that I, I gel printed. Um, the white part, you know, when you separate out the plies of the napkin, sometimes I use that white section on my gel plate to make very thin, fine collage paper. So I'm collaging on these colors. I want to use purples and teals and lavenders and those type of colors with a little bit of gold thrown in because I have this set of beads, sequins, and charms that um, I got. It's called Mardi Gras, I think, and I will link that little set of, of stuff in the description box below. I can't remember right now what the name of the, the company is that makes that, but it's this whole like coordinated set of flat back pearls and beads and sequins and charms and I think it even has ribbon in it. It's got everything that's all coordinated. And that's the reason that I named this this mermaid Marty the mermaid because for Mardi Gras because I used that set as the color inspiration for the doll. Also when I had made her before I made her with purple hair because I love purple hair. I have purple streaks in my hair as well. So um, this whole color idea really worked. So I collaged the front section using uh, Liquitex matte gel medium. Then I cut out those pieces, collaged. Um, in order to cut out the pieces, I stuck the little pattern pieces. You know, they're made out of deli paper, so they're translucent. So I can just glue them onto the back and that way the pattern as I'm cutting stays very, you know, in place and I don't mess up the cutting. And then 
um, I cut out all the pieces and I'm now punching the holes. At first, at first I was using an awl to punch the holes, but I decided I would use my crocodile, the smallest hole. So I tested that out to make sure that it would work with my um, mini brads. And it did. It, it could be a little bit smaller. I think I do have a punch that's even got a smaller hole, a sixteenth or something. But I just use this. I think it's a quarter inch, maybe. So then that deli paper ma makes no difference. It's glued down. It doesn't matter. So I can just collage then the back side over it so that my so my tail will be double sided. So when you flip the doll over to the back side, it will have the same colors as the front side. So I'm using those same pieces of deli paper and napkin to collage the back side of all the pieces. And then um, I will trim around them. And I did something strange this time. I don't know if I left it in the video or not, but I took my Elmer's permanent glue stick and went around the edges of all these little pieces and kind of rubbed and sealed to make sure that all the edges of everything will not come up because I could have folded over the paper from the front to the back and that would probably solve the problem too but um, I just didn't want any white edges showing or any of that paper to come up I think eventually I do actually go around all the white edges with a purple marker as well. I think I did, but <laughs> it's, um, this was a long process. So there's going to be two videos. They're approximately 20 inch, uh, 20 mi minutes. There we go. Wow. I couldn't think of the word. Wow. Um, 20 minutes each that show the process, but the actual process was, it was six hours. And that was wasn't with that with that was without making the doll originally, which I did on an hour forty five minute um, show. So <laughs> making these art dolls, at least the way I do it, is not a quick process. I'm very detail orientated. I want it to look a certain way, and to me, it really is an art form. Um, this is a mixed media art doll. It's got collage. It's got painting. It's got drawing. It's got every kind of thing that uh, goes into mixed media. So I'm particular. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> so then I repunch all the holes and put all my pieces together using mini brads. The one that the ones that uh, I used on this one are called antique gold. Um, that was what was on the doll and I didn't want to take it apart. So that's what I finished using it with. So she has two brads on the top that attach in the same holes where the legs go because she originally had legs. She was a land girl, then she became a mermaid, but she'll still be able to go back to land. <laughs> and then, um, then one brad for each of the sections of the tail. So then now she needs a top. Um, maybe she has scales over that part of her body, but you know, in classic art of mermaids, they usually wear a shell bra. <laughs> I guess that's how you hold up your boobies when you're a mermaid. I don't know. It seems very strange to me, but anyway, I decided to use the pieces that were left over from when I cut out all the little collaged tail pieces to make a matching top. So I drew it, same process, I drew it on the deli paper, then I glued the deli paper onto the back of one of the collage scraps and cut it out. And then I'm going to add details using a Faber-Castell pit pin small bullet tip, um, drawing the shell sections um, and around the edges to give it a little bit of definition. And then I'm also going to use some artist pit pins to add some shadowing on it as well. Oh, I, I use that uh, flat pearl right in the middle, half back, half flat back pearl, whatever you want to call it from this set. Then here's the artist pit pins, the brush pins. And I start out with a lavender and it really doesn't do much. So I end up going with the darker purple color to do 
some shading at the bottom of the shell to make it appear more curved. So that's why I did that. It gives the shell like a curved um, appearance. And I also go around the white edges with the marker to make sure that there are no white edges of the paper showing. Then I have this quarter inch purple ribbon um, and I decide to glue that on and make it into basically a bikini top like all of us have, well not the guys, but the rest of us have worn something like this sometime in our life probably where the uh, bikini top is, is tied around our neck and our back in order to keep it in place. So that's the type of top she will have. It has to be set aside to dry. So while it's drying, I'm going to attach the sequins to her tail. Um, I do this on both sides, but I leave the, sec the section of me doing it on the back out because you don't need to see me do it twice. But these sequins are really what attracted me to this little set. I guess it's got buttons in it too. It's got all kinds of stuff and it's all color coordinated. Um, they're, sh they're iridescent. There's some iridescent green ones and blue ones in there that are really pretty. And then there's a kind of a matte gold and some purple. And I want to make sure as I'm doing this that she can still move her tail back and forth. So I put the tail to the side like that to make sure that the, I'm not gluing sequins where it would need to slide under, if you know what I mean. And I'm using uh, Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, which is basically the same thing as um, Glossy Accents to glue all these on. It's a really good glue for something like this because it doesn't take away the shine of the sequins and things. They still have a sheen because the glue doesn't get, you know, make it dull or anything. And it glues on there really well. It sticks on there really well. So I'm using my pickup tool to pick them up and stick them in the glue. I put my little dots of glue down and then stick the sequins in there and press them down to make sure that some of the glue comes up through the little hole in the center of the sequin. And then for the the fin at the bottom, I start out putting on, oh, I guess I'm moving to the, to decorating the shell bikini top first. I'm using the little tiny beads. There's little pearl beads that are kind of a iridescent white, and then there's little purple beads. And so I'm putting the the uh, white beads and then putting the purple beads in between. The purple beads are hard to see on the video, but they are there and you'll be able to see them in the close-ups at the end of the video. So, you know, this is fussy. I tried to speed it up a little bit and I didn't leave it all in, but it's just picking them up, putting them in, the, in place, picking another one up, putting it in place, you know, <laughs> like that. Back and forth, back and forth until you get it all on there. Then set it aside to dry. This glue dries pretty darn fast, though. You don't have to wait very long for it to dry. It's the type of stuff that you could make something completely shiny by putting it over the whole thing. So back to the fin. I was going to put lines of sequins along the fin. And I did that, and then I didn't like it. Um, so I ended up scraping it off and putting beads instead. So... The beads looked a lot more fine. <coughs> Excuse me. It's very dry today here in the desert. Imagine that, the desert being dry. And I'm working on a mermaid. <laughs> the only place she'd have here to swim is the pool. So I put the white ones on the outer edges and then the purple ones down the center of the fin just to give it a little bit more detailing. Um, kind of like a, a fish fin, like a goldfish or something, has those little lines in the fin where it can kind of fan in the water. So she's pretty sparkly and uh, she has some nice color to her. I like the purple and teal and green together. Those colors look really nice together in my opinion. So I'm almost done with that. I wonder what I did next. <laughs> I can't remember. I have no idea. 
I'm sure I did something next, though. Oh, I pulled out that little gold mask charm because I'm going to use that as part of Marty, the mermaid's Mardi Gras outfit. So then I tied the shell bra on using the ribbons, tying it around the back and then tucking it under her hair and tying it around the neck. So it's like a true bikini. And you can see the bows in the back when you turn the doll over. It was a little bit tricky to t tuck it under her hair because the hair is stiff um, paper, you know. But I worked it out, trim trimmed all the edges so that there wasn't so much string hanging out everywhere. And now she has a top to cover up her boobies. <laughs> so the next thing I need is a crown because I just think that mermaids swim around wearing crowns. I, that's just my opinion. I think that's how it is. <laughs> or maybe she's a queen or a princess. I don't know, but she definitely needs a crown. So I have this other piece of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and I trace around the top of her head and then I draw in this base for the crown, working out how it's gonna work um, I figure out, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically it's a piece with a cut in the middle, which you'll see me cut it here in a second. And then you can open that up and the, the top part goes to the back of the head and the front part goes to the front of the head. So that is the base for the crown and it slides off of her head and on her head really easily. So it can be removed if you want to remove it and then I just made it purple by coloring it with the purple marker and making sure I go around all the edges so that no white is showing and that will be what I'm going to glue everything to for her crown so see how it just slips on slips on slips off and the charm is going to be on there but I need some other stuff so I get out some more of those scraps of the collaged watercolor paper and I draw some little uh, shell shapes. First I do this one that's like a long pointed shell which you've seen those before. I don't know what they're called but um, you've seen them before and they will have the shell details drawn on them both on, both on the front and on the back. But um, I decide that I need five of those so I make five of them cut them out and then I decide of course that they need to be collaged on the back because I don't want them to just be white on the back when you turn over the doll. So I draw in all the details on the front. They're kind of swirly like a it's almost like the top of a soft serve ice cream cone and I've seen that shape of shell lots of times. I also go around the edges with the purple marker to make sure there's no white showing. And then I glue all five of them to another scrap and cut them out so that they have collaged paper on the back as well. See, I'm very fussy. I, the details are very important to me. <laughs> and then I glue them onto the back section of the crown. So where the split is in the middle, I glue them, I tuck them behind on the strip so that they're not glued over the slit so the slit can still open and slide over her head and then these will be sticking up from the back and then just to make sure that they stay on there really well I collage another piece of paper along the bottom of them um, to it really will uh, keep them on there and once I detail everything you won't notice that it's a much lighter color then I add a little bit of white highlights and then I need to work on the front part of the crown. I know I'm going to put the charm on there, but I need some other stuff. So I draw what is I now know from another video, people telling me this is a scallop shell. <laughs> it's that classic shell oil looking shell. That's apparently what scallops live inside of. I didn't know that, um, but now I do. So same process. I draw it onto a scrap 
left over from cutting out the tail that's collaged on one side, cut it out, and there's only three of them because they're a little bit wider. And then, and they all came out different colors, which I thought was nice. Detail them, put the white highlights on, glue them on. Oh, I did, I did collage them on the back, but I left that part out trying to make the video smaller, shorter. And then I just put some of that same ribbon that's on the shell bikini top and a little bit of gold cording onto the Mardi Gras mask, which had, had a little charm um, holder on it. I could have just cut that off, but I thought it would look cool to have them coming down like that. And then this is a, uh, it's not a Wink of Stella, but it's something like that. It's a, a glittery clear fluid in a pin that was sent to me from a friend. And I'm sparkling up everything. And then I'm going to put that on the top of her head and I will be done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Subscribe, share, all those things. If you know someone who likes mermaids share it and then you can go on to uh, video number two for the outfit that I made her along with the legs and also the folder. So that's it for me for this one. Bye-bye.